Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. We had a request in the last video where we did a long leg cast. We had a request uh, from one of the, the viewers in the comment section if we could perform a demo on how to do a fiberglass short leg weight bearing cast using a cast stand, which I understand a few of you are using in your clinics. We will do that now using the following supplies. Uh, standard 3M fiberglass cast material, web roll, cast padding, stockinette, safety scissors, and of course the, the one main thing requested was the cast stand. Uh, for those of you that are using the cast stand in your clinics, uh, know that, well you already know that there are two sides to it, it rotates. You have the flat surface, which is the finishing surface, and the surface you begin with where you slide the foot in to achieve that right uh, angle, that 90 degree angle. Once the fiberglass starts to set up before it hardens, we know that you have to place the foot on the flat surface with the medial portion of the foot right over the speed bump there to, uh, to achieve that, uh, that arch and the bottom of the foot that is uh, the natural arch. So we'll go ahead and get started now. So what you can do is uh, we're going to start with your, your basic stocking net, which you've seen in multiple videos that I've done already previous to this. I'm going to go ahead and cut away where we're going to create that right angle as the doctor ordered so that that way when we have that right angle, uh, the padding isn't bunched up, or excuse me, the stocking net isn't bunched up under the padding and creating any kind of uh, any kind of marks or breaks in the skin. For this particular demo, since we're using the cast stand below, I'm going to fold back the sock on a teenage foot, teenage leg here for a second. I'm gonna have the patient lift their foot up and we're gonna slide this portion uh, of the cast stand between the stockinette and the foot. And just nice and easy, you work with the patient. Granted, you're working with a patient that typically is gonna have an, an injury, that's why you're casting them. And as best as you can, you want to work with that patient um, so that you're trying to create a nice right angle as much as they can tolerate uh, as well as following the doctor's orders. I'm gonna take the phone from the patient for a second just to show the right angle that we're trying to achieve. You can see there, this is actually a really good demo uh, because you can see the opposing foot, um, the good foot if you will, is it has the foot drop. And if you come over to where we're using the cast stand, you can see that we're actually about maybe two degrees from a right angle. So I'm gonna adjust just a little and I'm gonna have the patient lean their knee a little bit forward. And you're gonna see now we are at a really, really nice right angle. And then what I can do, I can hand this back to the patient and I'm gonna fold the sock over and we're gonna progress onward with the padding that you've seen before. The padding that you've seen me do multiple times is your standard web roll padding. You start, what you're doing is you're wrapping the padding around the stocking net, around the foot, and of course, in this particular case, around the cast stand as well. And, and you know, basic ortho 101 stuff, the sock, the padding, the fiberglass, none of it goes on tight. It goes on very, very comfortably. As you get to the crease or the, the angle, if you will, you can either do the shear method, which you see me doing here, or you can cut it in strips, which I'll go into here in just a sec to show you how we do that. The whole point is you don't wanna to have too much uh, interruption here at the fold. The strips are just as easy. You take the, the padding and you take it into strips. If you're gonna do the strip method, make sure that you go all the way up over the lateral and medial mal. So that way it covers the ankle bones as well when you're doing the strips. And if you're gonna do the strip method, also make sure to do a few strips on the, on the top surface as well so that they don't get a rub there from the fiberglass. So that's another version of doing it there with the strips. I'll go ahead and continue on. We'll work our way up the leg. We'll pad the whole leg and then we'll go on to the next step. So now that we've kind of skipped forward a little bit, so not to waste anybody's time watching me wrap a leg for like the hundredth time, we're just covering the basics here. Uh, you guys see me do this numerous times. I take extra strips and I, I create little bumpers on the ends, the, the, the toe end and the calf end. Uh, and I do this with pretty much all my casts because, you know, I work with peds. Uh, the other thing too is um, I reinforce the heel quite a bit. Um, 
textbook says you need two to three layers of padding throughout the whole cast. On a weight-bearing cast, I'm going to always double that, at minimum double that on the heel, especially if I know I'm going to have a very, very active kid. So if this is two to three layers all the way through, and I've created an extra bumper here and an extra bumper here, just know in your for your background, know for your, your memory's sake, that down here around the heel, it's going to be at least six to eight layers thick right where the heel makes contact. And uh, I'm going to borrow this for just a sec to show the angle that hasn't moved at all. And uh, I'll move these out of the way so people don't think we're advertising for vans. And uh, as you can see, we're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. I'm going to actually have the patient move their knee a little bit more forward. Right there is perfect. I want to try to get one or two degrees more than 90 since this is not an actual injured patient so that this will be a really, really nice weight-bearing cast. And we'll go ahead and proceed from there onto the fiberglass. So this part is relatively important. I've gone ahead and wet the fiberglass already, and we're going to go ahead and start rolling the fiberglass. Uh, the most crucial part of this is that once you've gotten those first two layers of fiberglass on and it's starting to set up, we're going to transition from the first position of the cast stand to the second position and it has to be done relatively steady and promptly before the fiberglass starts to get hard and we're going to do all that uh, we're going to try and do it all in one continuous flow here for you so go ahead and uh, aim that down here towards here thank you we'll go ahead and lay the fiberglass on uh, again pretty standard stuff we'll lay it on in this particular case the patient's toes are right here they're right here you can't see them visually I can see the bump in the sock, and of course we know that I'm going to bring this over and create a create a cuffed edge. But just so you guys know where we're starting and finishing the cast. And actually, I want to do something since we're doing a, a, a demo here. Just for comfort's sake, I did a, something here that I would not usually do and I wouldn't recommend. When you're coming to the crease here, I, I more favor bringing half of the fiberglass over the crease so that it's not digging into them. I think it's just a, it's a, a more comfortable cast. Having, having worn cast before, I think uh, they'll appreciate it and you'll have less people come back with complaint. There we go. I'll go ahead and lay all this on there. And I'll test the fiberglass to see how rigid it's becoming. And if I think I have time, if I'm going at a steady pace and I can put the second layer on after the cuffs, I'll do that before creating the bottom mold. And again, just because I'm working with a really, really cooperative uh, uninjured patient for demo purposes, uh, this is going really, really smoothly. We know in the, in the real clinic setting, uh, we're not always uh, lucky enough to have a uh, patient that's this cooperative. And again, it's, it's not their fault at all, it's just that they're injured and they're in discomfort. So what we've done is we've laid those first two layers on there. I'll confirm my positioning. I'll go ahead and create my cuffs so that the edges are nice and flared out and they remain soft for the patient's comfort. I'll do that at the toes as well. Also, while you're here at the toes, Take your thumbs, your index fingers, and put some space between the top portion of the cast and the toes so that when they start to weight bear on the cast, it doesn't rub blisters into the tops of their toes. I see that from time to time, and I feel really bad um, that that wasn't done for the patients. And I think, again, anything you can do to help an injured patient, injured kid feel a little bit better about their situation there we go. And it's actually, we actually still have time to work with this. Let me go ahead and put the second two layers on and then I'll show you how we shape it. So we've got time to finish up our cast really quickly. I went ahead and put the, the extra layer to create the cuff on the top already. I'm finishing up the bottom and then we're going to switch the stand to the positioning, positioning plate or the, the molding plate. Let's catch this little guy here, and we're pretty much done. 
creating the cast. Now we're going to shape the cast. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of lotion on my hands. Just so I can do some molding without getting stuck to the fiberglass. And I'm going to have the patient try their very best to maintain that position while I slide this out, flip it. And again, you want this medial bottom half of the foot resting right over the center of that hump. Bend your knee up for me. Bring your foot flat. Rest right there. One sec. Right there. Put your weight down on it. And then what you're doing is you're just reinforcing all the things you've already done, making sure the cuffs are flared out, both ends, making sure, coming over to the side, making sure you still have your right angle. I like to put my hand in this position and rub on the back over here by the Achilles and create a molded cast, not a tight cast, but a well-fitted molded cast so that it's not wobbling around on the back, as well as this thing, uh, this hump right here, creating that, that uh, natural arch, if you will. And I'm gonna let that set up for just a sec. So now the cast has had time to set up. Uh, you can see there by removing, by leaving this, uh, this uh, plastic wrap on there, the foot doesn't stick hard. I mean, it really doesn't stick at all. Um, you can see we have a nice right angle, nice solid cast. I am going to borrow this for just a sec and show you how, if I can get a good angle here, how we have a nice bearable surface. We have, I'll just put my hands there. You can see how we have a little curve right here. I hope you can see that. Uh, we have a nice little arch, natural arch right there. Um, and that completes, that completes our, uh, our short leg, uh, fiberglass weight bearing cast using the cast. And the only thing we're not doing is putting the shoe on, uh, you know, you'd put the cast shoe on, you'd strap it down and have them walk out the door. Uh, but we're going to save the DME use on that. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, let us know and we'll make uh, more videos. Thanks very much. Have a good day.